You're listening to the Gold Standard Podcast. I'm your host, three-time Olympian and motivational speaker, Leah Amico. On this show, we're going to dig deep to unlock what it actually takes to build a foundation for greatness. If you're an ambitious person with big vision, but you feel like fear is holding you back, get ready for some major breakthroughs. Let's dive in. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Gold Standard Podcast. I'm Leah Amico, and today we have a very special guest. Our guest received his commission in 2000 as a United States Marine Corps officer and later transferred into the Air Force's elite as a special warfare officer. He retired as a lieutenant colonel after 20 years. He has many decorations, including three bronze stars, one with valor and the Air Force Combat Action Medal. He runs a nonprofit. He is an author, he is a speaker, and I am so excited to welcome Dr. Damon Friedman to the podcast. Welcome, Damon. Hey, thanks a lot. I'm, I'm just such a, such a huge fan of all of your work, your podcasts, and just your endeavors. I've been following you for a long time and just super honored to be on the gold standard. Thanks a lot for having me. Well, I am so excited to talk a little bit about the characteristics that make up the gold standard because... When I saw you years ago, you came and spoke a couple times at the church I attend, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills with Pastor Jack Hibbs. And Damon, first and foremost, like one of the things that resonated with me, and I want to talk a little bit about this to start off with, I just felt passion oozing from you. And I so connected with that because I feel like as an Olympic athlete, like it was my passion that really gave me that edge. So can you talk a little bit about the passion? Like, is that something you've always had? Is it something that you just, that keeps you motivated? What is it? What does it look like? You know, this is, this is my position, right? There's 8 billion people in the whole world. Just think about that. 8 billion people in the whole world. And I'm a million percent confident that there's a master plan for each and every person. And for me, I was kind of like so many other people out there trying to figure out, okay, well, what is my purpose? In fact, what is the definition of purpose? And, you know, and and is there something more to life than all of this? And I'm telling you right now, um, when I figured out what my purpose was, my higher calling, it was like, literally it was an ignition. It was, it was like TNT exploding. I figured out exactly what I'm here for. And I also realized how short time is. You're here today, you're gone tomorrow. So this passion that you see literally oozing from every pore of my body, like, you know, is the fact is, is that I don't have much time. And I know that I'm called to do something really great in the world. That's why I call it to be an unstoppable force for good. And so, yes, this is something, this, it's just kind of a, a, um, a trajectory where I'm on right now. It was a paradigm shift when I figured all that out. And since then, I've been traveling at Mach 1. And I think that's what you and I have a lot in common. We're almost like flying in parallel paths. You've got your own area of operation and I have mine and we're going to different sectors and meeting in the middle. Today, we're meeting right in the same AO right on your podcast. So yeah, that's what I'm about, man. I'm just trying to figure things out and how I can make an atomic impact in the world, just like you. I love it. Okay. I love it. And like you said, you know, what you we're, we're both moving forward. We're making a difference and you're the first military person that I have had on. I'm sure that's probably not the right terms, but I've, I've had, you know, elite pro athletes, Olympic athletes, gold medalists, but I love everything you stand for because I really believe the core concepts of what I share through the gold standard and this podcast have to do with every aspect of life. They really impact. And when we have core values that are so strong. So I love that you use the word purpose because I feel like if people can understand their purpose, they can make such a difference. So let's go back a little bit. I want to, I want to hear about Damon as a child, kind of maybe those core qualities that you see have helped you to get where you are today and become who you are. Yeah. So, um, my story started, uh, in downtown Los Angeles. I was born and raised UCLA hospital in LA. And for me, I learned at a very young age. Um, I, I, I started my path on resiliency. I, I lived in 14 different places in the first 12 years of my life. I live in the melting pot. I lived in not so good places. Right. And I had, I had a, a mom who is literally the first Wonder Woman of my life. And the reason why I know that she's the first Wonder Woman is because she was the primary protector. Like we've got great moms out there, I'm telling you. But when you're being raised and you have 
um, a very abusive uh, father, biological father, psychological, physical, social, spiritual, like this whole thing. Um, you need somebody that's going to protect you. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of kids out there that don't have a Wonder Woman mom like the way that I did. And, um, and she really helped shape who I am as a man, right? She was the person that showed me what boldness and courage was all about. And so, and she exuded like every time my dad, my biological father was violent, she was a shield, literally a shield, like the Captain American shield, right? And um, I learned a lot from her. I learned from her scars and I learned a lot from her, um, just from her strength. And that was really the foundation. So here I am, I'm from LA, my mom's working around the clock and, um, and she's, she, she's working for $4 and 25 cents an hour just to put rice and beans down on the table. Um, my brother and I, we got into a lot of trouble, unfortunately. And uh, I mean, she was working like 29 days out of 30 days, like, you know, out of the whole month. And I just remember this one time as we were doing our nefarious activities, we were breaking and entering people's houses, we we're stealing their stuff, selling on the streets. But here's the deal, like, I want, I, I, I'd like to take a pause when I say this, because I wasn't like your standard criminal. Like I was the kid that, you know, didn't have shoes, you know, like I had holes in my clothes. I didn't have, you know, the supplies, my school supplies. I didn't have all this stuff that all these other kids had. And I would go and buy shoes. I would buy clothes. I'd buy my mom, like literally birthday presents. I, I still remember the perfume that I purchased, the, the, the necklace that I bought, the gold necklace for her birthday. Uh, so I used the money for, for good, even though the way that I got it was, uh, was, was not the best way. Um, and so for me, just kind of just figuring those things out, like what does right look like? Um, unfortunately I was on my own and ultimately I ended up going to jail and that was a paradigm shift in my life, right? Like, uh, I went to juvie, I'm in that jail cell and I'm trying to figure out how in the world did I get here? And I'm sitting there crying, right? Like crying. And I'm thinking there's gotta be something more to life than all of this. Just imagine, right? I'm, I, I'm poor. I got, I'm five foot nothing, a hundred nothing. Um, we got no money, no heritage, no legacy, no name, no nothing. Like I'm, I'm just a kid in jail. And I got a mom trying to work it around the clock for two treasures. And in that jail cell, right? There are two voices that spoke to me. And this is super important, for, especially for all the listeners out there that sometimes feel like, man, like there's no hope. Let me, let me tell you, my biological father used to always tell me something. He used to always say this, you're never going to amount to anything without me. You're never going to amount to anything without your father. The people that were in charge of literally like making my, like to, to encourage me and empower me like teachers, they said, you're a loser. You're never going to, you know, you're, you're not smart enough. And you know what? I believed everybody. I believed everybody. That's why I got to where I was at. I was kicked out of three different schools, one grade. I flunked second grade, I believe it was, or fourth or wherever, I think. And, and the reality is, is it, man, I was not somebody that believed in myself. So in that jail cell, I heard my biological father's voice. But then in that jail cell was the first time I heard another voice and said, I have great plans for you. Plans to win and persevere, not to lose, not for evil. Now time out, time out. Am I gonna listen to my biological father's voice? Or am I gonna listen to this other voice? I have no idea what it is, but I'm telling you right now, Leah, I got goosebumps all over my body right now because I remember that day that I heard that voice and I made a command decision to believe in that, to believe in myself, to believe that everything that my mom ever told me that I could, I could do anything that I put my heart and mind and soul into it. And it was there that I changed my life from juvie. When I got out, I made some major changes and that literally was that paradigm shift that I needed. And just hearing you share that, I, I agree. I think there's so many voices around. There's social media nowadays, there's comparisons, there's people who do have really bad home lives. There's this feeling like people don't measure up. And so I love that in that moment, that make it or break it moment, you already kind of were breaking, right? You were hitting that rock bottom. But I snapped, I Leah. That. I snapped. Yeah. Yeah. And God just really kind of met you in that moment. I think that's awesome. So tell me a little bit about 
you know, I mean, we don't have obviously too long on a podcast, but I want to hear kind of getting into the Marine Corps. And I know, you know, how did you work your way up once you found yourself in that environment or did it change everything? It's like, tell me a little bit about that experience. So check it out. You told me when we first started that you usually have incredible athletes on your podcast, rightfully so, Mrs. Gold Medal List, like multiple gold medalists, okay? Mrs. World Champion. Um, I never won a gold medal in the Olympics and I surely never won a gold medal in the World Championships, but this is what I did win. When I got out of that jail cell, I made a decision. And you know, we were really good at one thing. We were good at running. Every time the police would chase us, they never caught us, right? Like the way that the, that I even ended up in jail was because the cops went, knocked on my door. I had nowhere to go because that was the day my mom had her break. And I was, I'm gonna tell you right now, I was more scared of my mama than I was of, of that police. And, uh, and so we started running. And we started running 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles, 40 miles, 50 miles, 60 miles, 70 miles, 80 miles, 90 miles, 100 miles a week. And one day we woke up, my brother and I, and we were one of the fastest runners for me. I was undefeated in the mile. In high school, I was a junior Olympian for the United States. I was smoking everybody. And then ultimately, ultimately, I ended up representing my country in the international soil and international championships. And so even though I didn't win a gold medal, I'll tell you right now, I won a trophy like nobody's business. Uh, as I gained all these scholarships, I went to college. I was the first one in my family to go to college, get a degree. And when I finished, my mom asked me, what are you going to do now? Let me tell you something, Leah, hear this out, sister, because this is about leadership development. This is about molding character. This is about discipline, honor, courage, and commitment. Every time my family needed help, my country was there. Every time, man, maybe, you know, low-income housing wasn't the best, but you know what my country provided. And there are times that we didn't have enough money for food, my country provided. And when it was time for an education, my country provided. So I joined the Marine Corps. So for all of you devil dogs out there, hoorah. So I joined that core and that was the very beginning, the, the impetus of this 20 year career where I started for first, you know, five years, I was part of the invasion in 2003. Ultimately my last unit in the Marine Corps was second force recon. I was a pathfinder team leader there. And then ultimately I transitioned over into the US Air Force elite special tactics known as special warfare today. And I spent all these years, 15 years doing capture kill missions hunting down the most extreme terrorists in the whole world. These are bad, bad people, all right? Like I'm talking about the most dangerous people, people that put bombs into schools and kill people, bombs in marketplaces and kill people, innocent people that I'm telling you right now, there's good and there's evil in the world. I've seen evil, I've seen the enemy in the face and these people need to be taken care of and that's what I did, but unfortunately it came at a cost. So 20 years um, doing all this and, and finally I'm just so, excited that I finally retired. And there's just so much that I've learned that I'm applying today. Well, you and the others in our military truly are the nation's heroes. So number one, I just want to thank you for your service. And I know we just, we all owe all our gratitude to all the men and women who have served, are serving, who've paid the ultimate sacrifice. So I just want to thank you in that sense. So I love that. I love the experiences you've had. The fact hearing your story just really makes me think about like second chances in some ways, what a life turnaround, right? And how many people that if we could direct their energy and their thought process and their future beliefs and hopes and dreams, like we can change so many lives. I know that's what you're out there doing. Um, let's talk a little bit about the overcoming obstacles part. You've kind of mentioned how you did, but if you were to say to somebody like, here is how you overcome the struggle, what would you tell yeah. them? So, well, first of all, you know, my story is a little bit different than other people's, but you know what? Um, I'll tell you that, or, or better yet, how I, I got to my struggle is different than other people's, but struggle is struggle. That That's really what, I want to focus on. There's an epidemic right now. Uh, there's a mental health crisis. There's a suicide epidemic right now. Over 20 veterans take their lives every single day. It's even worse with law enforcement officers or first responders. The toughest job in America right now is to be a law enforcement officer. I believe that down the core of my soul and just to hear, you know, the stories of the first responders all the time. Uh, for me, doing, you know, having a very abusive childhood 
And, and there's a lot, you know, that I do share on stage and there's a lot that I don't. Uh, there's a lot that I started unpacking just in 2019 for the first time. Trauma that I experienced in my childhood that was deep scar, you know? And, um, and then when you just kind of try to process all the trauma from war uh, and you couple it all that together, you could find yourself in some pretty dark place. For me, I remember the culmination of my struggles um, dealing with uh, depression, anxiety, these PTSD things, flashbacks, nightmares. Um, I've had multiple concussions. You're an athlete. Most athletes have received concussions, multiple concussions, and it's a major issue. Uh, now we're starting to see what is uh, post-concussive syndrome, CTE is all about. And um, you know, it's very destructive. And for me, I had so many concussions, five registered mild traumatic brain injuries, synonymous with concussions. And after 2010 deployment, so after 10 years, multiple deployments to Afghanistan and Iraq, I find myself sitting in the living room, contemplating committing suicide. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, a lot of people are taken back when I share this. But I'm going to tell you, it's very common. I can't tell you how many thousands of people have come to me and said, and you know, I'm, I'm thinking about taking my life. And, and they'll describe how they're going to do it. And they're explaining why they're going to do it. And, and here's the deal, Leah. I understand. I really totally understand. I understand why somebody would want to take their life. You get to this point, you're dealing with PTSD, you're dealing with mild traumatic brain injury, you're dealing with chronic pain. A lot of athletes deal with a lot of chronic pain. You're dealing with um, moral injury. You're dealing with all these things and you couple them together, insomnia when people aren't sleeping, you get a little nuts. And I was sitting there in the living room and I remember, man, I was sitting there in that living room with my pistol and I'm thinking, you know, maybe, maybe it's time. But here's the crazy thing that in my darkest time, it says, for the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness is now overcome it. In 2010, I made a recommitment to my life on the mountain in Afghanistan, in the Korgal Death Valley. It was a turning point in my life. And when I came back from that, I was so messed up. But then again, I heard that voice again, the same one I heard in Juvie. I have great plans for you, plans to win and persevere and not to lose. And again, I had to pick up this rucksack, put it back on my back and say, I'm ready to go for another round. I'm ready to go for another you know, mountain. And so it was there when I started getting a lot of therapy. For all of you people out there who are listening right now, if you're struggling, it's okay not to be okay. It's just not okay if you don't address it. And man, I'm telling you, God put some incredible people in my life. They surrounded me, psychologists, social workers, physical therapists, functional medicine, insomnia experts, all this stuff, people of faith, people of science, people of, uh, that had a heart for veterans. And then one day I woke up and I was feeling a little bit better. I'll tell you, I spent three months in an inpatient recovering from my injuries. And I thought that there'd be no hope. But the bottom line is, as long as that there's a God in heaven, there's always hope. And so I tell everybody out there, if you're struggling with something, it doesn't matter how big or small, get the help that you need because the world is better when you're here. And so that's my two cents for anybody out there who's struggling. Mental health, it's a challenge, but you know what? You can overcome major obstacles, but you've got to face your struggles with veracity and be ferocious about it. Because time is short. We need, we only have one shot in this life and God has an incredible plan for you. And he has called each and every one of you to change the world for good. I believe it down the core of my soul. I know you believe that down the core of your soul and all your listeners, they need to take a step back and understand that God's master plan is all about being an unstoppable force for good. That is such an important message that is needed so much today. Uh, you you mentioned, right, veterans who come back and I have friends who are married in those situations where they almost feel like even though they're living in the same home that they've lost their husband that they knew, right? And, you know, that withdrawn and, and you know, just almost, again, that just loss of connection in some ways. I recently was talking to someone who loves the Lord and she's in ministry and she opened up to me and was very real and raw that, she had this moment where she just thought I'm going to end my life. And, and it's the last person you would think. And so I, I think you sharing that is very important. I believe at some point in life, either every person or somebody, every person knows has at least contemplated the thought has passed through, but I, I love for you what your nonprofit is 
um, SOF missions, it says you have a focus on empowering warriors to find purpose and be resilient. And, and your nonprofit right. helps and reaches out and says, we want to be that lifeline. And I love how you just said, like, get that help. It is okay. We need to voice it, right? Because I believe the enemy works in yeah. silence, right? And yeah. and we need to be able to share. And so for you, sharing that and being real and vulnerable, more and more people, I had a former NLB, MLB player tell his story and he got very close to, you know, com- ch- changing his life and ending his life. And to me to hear that, I think when people say it, it's almost like, okay, wait a second. It reminds us of that purpose, like you mentioned. So thank you for sharing that. Very important. Okay. Let's shift gears just a little bit. So the L in gold standard stands for leadership. And I know it's very, very important. You are a leader through and through everything you stand for, everything you speak on. And I know you have a book. Right. Tell me a little bit about your book on leadership. Yeah. So, so check it out. It's called igniting movements, right? What this is about is it look at the end of the day, you have a purpose, figure out what it is, right? What is, what, what is keeping you up at night? That was the question. You know, when I'm going through my doctorate program and I'm starting, it's like, before you even start this, this program, you better figure out what keeps you up at night. Because if you wrote a focus paper on something that like you think is nice to know and you'd like to, and it doesn't keep up at night, it's not worth it's not worth doing for a dissertation. This is a result of four years worth of this education, this doctoral studies, igniting a movement and what does it mean to have, be a servant leader? What does it mean to have a driving ideology? What does it mean to have organizational construct? And what does it mean to contextualize a strategic me- uh, message? And so this is what it's about. But I will tell you this is that leadership is this. I'm in a, I'm in a national syndicated radio show and I'm in the midst of, of making this film surrender only to one, which, you know, as, as you, as you know, Jack Hibbs, it showed over at Chino Hills, God bless that man and all the good work that he's doing. And the reality is, is that I'm sitting there and on the show, I have a Vietnam era veteran comes on, we're doing Q and A and I'm getting all this publicity on doing this film. And all of a sudden this guy, the soldier says, can I ask you a question? So you're going to show this film and you're going to create awareness of the suicide epidemic. I appreciate this leadership. I appreciate you doing this. And my question is, is what are you going to do about it? I'm like, well, uh, I, I'm, I'm doing this film. No, 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 no. I don't think you understand, sir. I'm asking you what you're going to do about the suicide epidemic. So once you tell everybody that over 20 veterans are taking their lives every single day, what are you going to do? I was like, oh, you know, well, we got the VA, we got these clinics, we got all these uh, organizations. Like, no, I'm asking what you are going to do. And I'll tell you, I was like really taken back. I went home that night. I was really bothered by what he said. I kind of felt like I, I botched the interview. Like, oh, I, you know, like, like, like he showed me up. But this is what happened. God said, I got a plan for you. It's a plan to win. And I got a plan for all these other men and women who have served. And that plan that I have for you is the same for them. And you're going to do something about it. And that was the birth of this organization, SOF Mission. So going back, all the care that I ever received, who am I? Who am I to be the only one to receive this care? Do you know out of the millions and millions of veterans, the, the, the war fighters that deployed to Afghanistan, Iraq, and all the surrounding areas, they don't get anything. I'm a special operator. I'm a multi-million dollar weapon jumping out of perfectly good airplanes at 20,000 feet on oxygen. I'm a combat diver, FAA air traffic controller. I am I'm proficient in every weapon known to man, right? So I got all this great care. But what about my Marines in Fallujah? What about my soldiers in Marja? What about my Rangers out there? Right. They don't get the same care. So as a leader, sometimes you got to pick up another rucksack and you got to go, no, this is my burden. And so that was the birth of SOF missions. So in this book, it's about taking action. Stop talking about the problem, friends. Start doing something about it. Right. Because we got enough people talking and not enough people doing. This book is here to empower each and every one of you. You want to change the world for good? This is the formula. I studied hundreds of movements hundreds of movements of people that change the world for good, change the world for good. That's what this is about. Igniting movements. Wow. And it's so powerful to think one person, right? You're one person, but you really can ignite a movement that changes thousands, millions of lives. And not only that leaves a legacy for you, you're a husband and you're a father. How have all your experiences now been turned into what you pour into your wife and your children so you know i'm gonna tell you right now there's this uh saying that you could 
you know, you can gain everything but lose your own soul. I will tell you that I think in faith, you can you can go out there and save the world and lose your own family. I'm going to tell you right now, I almost did. You got to find balance. And today I've got an amazing son. He's 15 years old, super talented. He's my prized possession. And I don't mean to get emotional because when you ask me that question, and I'm so passionate about fulfilling my higher calling that sometimes you leave the most important people behind. So today I had to reevaluate how am I going to put my energy? Like, what am I going to do? Because if, if my home, I call my fire base, right? That's where I come back from war. Like you're out in the field and you're out doing the nation's bidding, but you got to come back and you need to, you need to clean up. You need to recharge your batteries. You need to, you know, clean your weapon. You got to put more ammo in your magazines. You got to grab them grenades and throw in that go bag, man. And you got to get a little sleep, right? Well, you know what? My fire base at my home. Now I got to put at the top because if my fire base at home isn't good, there's no way I can go out there and do the nation's bidding, the kingdom's bidding, or any bidding that I've been called to do. So today, I'm really just focusing on how could I invest in my family because I love them and I'm here right now. I have won and I, I, I am successful, but because it's because I've had an incredible support system. I have an incredible team at home, my Spartan wife, my Spartan kids. And you know, at the end of the day, now I'm at this age, I got an 11-year-old daughter. I call her BB because she's a lightning bolt. She's a direct reflection of, 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 of my wife and myself, you know, and I've got an incredible family. I'm pouring into them now. My son, every time I do a men's event, I said, you're coming with me. And he hears me every single time up on stage. He's there when everybody's coming around and they want to hug me and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hey, I'm keep what's most important at the top. And that's him because I'm here for a purpose. It's to honor him, to honor my gifts and to change the world for good. He's there, he's seeing me right, signing my book, autographing it, and always, always giving credit where credit's due. It's my faith, my family, and then my community. And it's just been such a great uh, kind of transition and refocus of my life. Trust me, I wanna go out and do a lot of incredible things just like you, but balance, balance is critical. Balance is so important. It's instrumental in being that unstoppable force for good. Yeah, such such a quality message and point to make. And wow, I think this is why I relate so much to you because yes, I was not out, right? Fighting battles to keep our country safe like you are and coming up against the most wicked people on this earth. But I was out representing my country. I was traveling around. And like you said, I know I couldn't have done it when I stood on that podium. It was looking in the stands and seeing my parents, first of all, and my sister and brother, my parents who sacrificed so much to be able to get me to that podium. And then later on, my husband who got to cheer me on as I represented our country. And then my last Olympics, I was a mom and my three-year-old son and, you know, was out there, but you're right. Like, yeah, we can chase after all the things that the world offers, the fame, the money, the attention. But in the end of the day, who are we when we come home, we get into our room and we say like, what am I really doing? Right. And so I love that you just make those points because even if it, it's a reminder to help people to, to not lose that focus. One of the things I do when I get really into these busy seasons, if we're looking ahead, I always try to say, okay, but where's the rest season afterwards. And I, I really, you know, ask my husband if it's busy, Hey, are you okay? How does this look for our family? And, and I'm telling you, you're doing a great job, Damon, because my two youngest boys are 16 and 17. We have two years left of high school before they're all out. <laughs> and so keep, Keep doing that yeah. great job. Okay, let's let's finish up with the last letter of the gold standard. So we talked about goals, overcoming obstacles, leadership, and now this piece, which I, you've kind of mentioned it and alluded to, it is the action piece because we can think about what we want to do, right? We can go through struggles and fight through it. We can even say, hey, there's great leaders around me, but it comes down yeah. to the daily discipline, the drive, the dedication, the commitment. Like, what did that look like for you, not only in the military and how important was that, but what does that look like today for you? So I think I mentioned earlier that more is not better, right? Less is best. And, and, and this message is going to go for you too, right? I'm going to tell you that we're, we can work around the clock, but at this point in time, time is so short. You got to take a step back and you have to ask yourself, What's, is, the, is the juice worth the squeeze, right? Is the risk worth the reward? Because I've always said this, if the enemy can't make you bad, he's gonna make you busy. So you gotta take a step back. 
Nothing is worse than being exhausted. Man, I'll tell you, you can't do nothing for the kingdom when you're smoked. You can't do anything when you're just constantly dealing with anxiety and depression and, and you're so consumed with whatever's happening inside. How in the world can you even figure out what's happening out there and what God's called you to do out there, right? So you got to rest and recover. So I'm going to tell you, it takes discipline for me because I'm a tornado. I'm a man of action. I like to engage. I'm a door kicker. That's what I am. And you know what? For me, it takes discipline. It takes a lot of discipline to take a step back and just breathe. It takes a lot of discipline to say, all right, in this day, I'm not doing anything. I'm telling you on Sunday, I have given all power and authority for my wife to rebuke me and beat me down with a stick if I work on Sunday. Like you got, you got to stop and, and the day, you know, it, uh, on Sunday is perfect to just kind of like, all right, God, I'm just going to, I'm just going to give you this day. I'm going to just really invest in my family and whatever, but I'm a workaholic just like you, sister. I like to work. I love to work. I love it. I love to work late. My wife will give me that, that I like, why are you still on the phone? I'm like, baby, I'm making money and I'm making impact and I'm changing the world. That's what I'm doing. I got this nonprofit at Swift Missions and I, I want to kind of do something about um, kind of share it because it's about my commitment, right? It's about you evaluate everything that you are in life and you have to make a command decision where you're going to pour your heart and soul into it. I believe that of these 8 billion people in the whole world, that God's called me by name to do this business right now. It's hard. Suicide prevention, helping on my veterans and my law enforcement in 2011, I'm laying, I'm in Bagram, Afghanistan, and I'm in my, I'm, I'm, I'm my, in my sleep sack, right? Like, like in a little container, right? It's dirty. And I just, I remember just praying. I said, God, what do you, what do you want from me? Mm -hmm. And that was the moment that the concept of SOF missions was born. In 2011, I made a phone call to my wife and I said, baby, what would it look like? What do you think about the idea that God's calling us to save? not just thousands, not just tens of thousands, not just hundreds of thousands, but millions of veterans lives. And what would it look like if we actually started a nonprofit and we provided all this free high-end medical care, everything that I ever received myself, I could give to others like, that's a lot of money. I said, hey, wherever God guides, he provides. We prayed about it. And in 2011 in Bagram, Afghanistan, we established our 501c3 in war. How cool is that? So since then, moving forward, you have to ask yourself, what has God called you to do? We got all these ideas. Proverbs 19, 21 says that, you know, man has his plans, but check it out. God's plans endure forever. I don't want my plans. I want his. And so I know without a shadow of a doubt, 300 and over 300 million Americans, I'm called to be in this space. It's hardcore and I'm committed to it. Do I have other ambitions? Do I have other desires? I do. But you know what, Leah? I'm too old. I'm too old to be doing my own thing, man. You know what I'm saying? I want to make an impact in the world. And, and, and I never thought I'd be in this business. And so as I travel around, I'm focused my energy on Friedman Forrest, my company. And what I do is, is I walk around and, and thank God for Premier Speakers Bureau, who's put me on a platform where I'm speaking all over the country and I share my story. But in my story, I have an agenda. My agenda is to share my organization and how we're empowering other people how we're empowering our warriors to find purpose and be resilient which is my nonprofit. and so the reality is is that's where my focus is it's so easy to be distracted and derailed but the bottom line is is this is where god wants me this is the fight he wants me in until he gives me a follow-on mission this is where i'm staying and this is a lifelong mission so it's about discipline it's about commitment every single day i'm focused on this I get all these other opportunities that trust me, a lot of it is lucrative. The real question is, is that, is that really where God wants me? Is that really where I belong? Is that a flesh thing? Is that like a personal thing or is it a higher calling thing? So then I have that and I have to have honor in everything I do, honor in the work that I'm doing. If I'm going to be involved in it, Leah, it's got to be the best. Excellence in all we do. Air Force mantra there, baby. Right? So I'm, I, I believe in honor. I believe in courage. It's going to take a lot of time, money, and energy. And you have no idea the emotional that, that stuff that we have to deal with when warriors are coming to us, sitting there, I'm about to kill myself. And I got an incredible team say, we're going to conduct, you know, we're going to pop that Red Star cluster and a QRF, quick reaction force is coming to get you and extract you out. I'm in that business every single day. It's hardcore and it takes commitment. It takes courage and it takes honor to do it. 
And I tell everybody out there who's listening to the gold standard, find your higher calling, understand your purpose. It's what keeps you up at night and then be all in because you ain't got much time. And those, that's all I got for people out there, man. And I'm telling you, it's how you ignite a movement when you're all in. Yeah, that is the gold standard. That's exactly why I wanted you to come onto this podcast. You and I haven't talked. We've followed each other. I followed all your speaking and traveling. And, you know, even when you were retiring and graduating with, you know, your doctorate at Harvard, I mean, I've been following it and seeing your wife and your children and all their successes as well. But I love, I love that your wife is your teammate. I love that your priority is your family. I love that God calls each of us. And that is one thing that you say that, and it resonates so much because I too, just immediately when opportunities come, I, I say, God, is this from you? Cause I don't need it. If it's not, no matter how great it sounds, I want your will every single day above my will. So I love how you bring and tie that in. I know you're changing so many lives, Damon, not only for what you've already done, but for what is to come. I am so excited and just to be connected with you. Um, how can people get a hold of you as we wrap this up? Um, where can they find you? Yeah, so, you know, I, I believe in empowering people to change the world for good. They could just go to DamonFriedman.com, learn more about the work that I'm doing, join forces together to be an unstoppable force for good. But I like to take a second and say this. If you're a veteran out there, law enforcement officer, first responder, and you're struggling, listen to me, get the help that you need because there are people in your life that deeply love and appreciate you. This world is so much better because you're here. And at times you may think, you know what? I'm better off gone. I'm not significant. Nobody loves me. It's a lie. I'm, I'm reaching out to you. I'm letting you know, come, get some help. Let us help you. Give us a chance. Give us a shot. SOFmissions.org. Check it out. SOFmissions.org. Law enforcement, first responder, my brothers and sisters in arms. Come get the help that you need. We're here and we're ready. That's what I got for you. So powerful. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. I Cannot thank you enough. Um, look forward to continue to watching all that you're doing, Damon. Well, and, I really okay. appreciate you. Yeah, I, I, I really do. And, and I just want to say one other thing that uh, when I get out to California, I'm going to be speaking over at uh, Crossline the 4th of July weekend. And then later on, uh, I think in Memorial Day weekend at a Grateful Nation Remembers up at Yuba City um, and uh, at Calvary. And I just wanted to share, uh, that's where I'm going to be out in Cali, but check it out. When I'm in your neck of the woods, I'm coming to your house and I'm going to put on that gold medal and I'm going to take a picture and you can't stop me because I'm already working this out with your hubby. Just let you know. That is so amazing. Well, I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to connect, to meet your wife in person, to have you meet my husband. I know it's going to be so much fun. Everybody who knows my husband will be like, yeah. oh yeah, for sure. All right. Well, thank you so much, Damon. Everybody, thank you for listening to the Gold Standard Podcast. This is what it's all about. Every single thing that Dr. Damon Friedman talked about today, this is living it out, the leadership, the resilience, the uh, mindset, and ultimately following your God-given purpose. God has a plan for every single one of you. So don't ever forget that. We'll see you here next time on the Gold Standard Podcast. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Gold Standard Podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard, please share it with a friend. You can post on social media and tag at Leah20USA or use hashtag Gold Standard Podcast. Make sure you also subscribe so you get notified each week as a new episode releases. You can subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. We appreciate your reviews as they help encourage others to listen in. Until next time, live out the gold standard and keep turning your goals into reality. Mm -hmm.